Well, if you can see this muffler, you see that it broke off. This is on a 2004 Dodge Cummins 59, and all the rest of it broke broke off. It just broke right there at the muffler joint itself, and we pulled that part off just to keep going. And uh, you see right there. I've already wrapped it once in a piece of stainless and riveted that on. And we're going to install from the pre-muffler, which you can see it up there, pre-muffler back, a edge called jammer exhaust system. That's over here. Yeah, there's the other part that broke off. You can see it. And this, these are the new parts. It's a four, 400 series or 409 stainless. It's not as good as the 304, but it's okay. I mean, it'll last as, at least, I'm thinking, as long as the factory original, which lasted 16 years, which is not bad. And there's the clamps. Before we try to get this thing off with the rubber grommets that are holding it, I call them grommets. I don't know what the real name is. I spray them down with some lube because these little tips on the end of this barb that holds it on there, they're not very cooperative if you don't spray some lubrication on it to start with. Helps it expand over it too. Just that one. That one. Well, I was gonna say, the reason we're doing this is to save some time. Trying to fight this joint and trying to pull the muffler off at the same time is it's a big battle. So we're gonna saw this first to make this small piece easier to manage and the other part will just slide off. <laughs> so bad. Yep. <clears throat> On this, this is the, like the pre-muffler, if you will. Some people call it a cat. It's really not. Anyhow, this is a crimped on pipe and it's swedged on there. You can't get that off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut straight through here. If I had a torch and I could, acetylene torch, and I do, but my tank's empty, I could just wash it off with my torch head coming this way and just knock it off that way, but I don't. And it's gonna take me an hour to go get one. So I'm just gonna cut it off this way. It's not the easiest way to do it. Just cut it along this edge here. deep so you gotta watch it every now and then make sure you don't that's probably close enough to go ahead and give it a good smack and see if I can bust it loose. I'm going to cut it a little bit in here too though. Just hang on. Just for a second. I go a little bit deeper right there in that cramp. Let's 
stop right there and let's see if I can pop it. That's how you do it. Here's the part we just cut off. If you notice, I got right to that ragged edge of where I was getting in, getting ready to get into it. Did not get into it. it didn't touch the other pipe at all. But I stopped a few thousand short of getting into that. Hit it with a chisel. Pops right open. It jumps right off. But I'd still rather have a torch because it would have been easier. That's how you do it. <laughs> a lot of times when, well, one thing that did help is this Lennox blade. It's their top of the line gold. I can't remember the other name, other word that's on it. It's been rubbed off, but it's a really nice blade. It cuts just superb. But also, it doesn't jump around as much when you get up onto something and you're just trying to cut a little bit at a time and rock your blade back and forth. The, the blade's everything, and this is a, a really nice blade, one of the best blades I've ever used, and I've used a lot of different types of blades. So anyhow, for whatever that's worth, but if you're not careful, the blade will stick and make you go like this, and so the blade doing all the work. So there's a right amount of pressure you push up, and the right amount of tension that you put back here to hold it, so it doesn't do that. That's something you have to learn, but if you play around with it, figure it out, you'll get there. And then a good quality saw too, that has a really good amount of torque and a manipulative trigger makes all the difference. Now the directions in the box, in the pamphlet said to put this on first. So that's what we're gonna do. You can see this, this lines up with that pretty good. It's a slip joint, so we'll put it in there where we want it. Go ahead and get this started. These big diesel grommets are really tough for a reason. I wonder if that actually doesn't really do much for holding it. Actually, I probably ought to rotate it and let the rubber take some of the weight. That's what you're supposed to do. And we'll do that there. That's it. Might be too far. It is a little bit. Take it back. You really want that to hang kind of free without being in a bind. Like about right there. You got a little bit of room. It's got some room to move around. And that should just about do it. Okay. Alright, we got the clamp on, which was fairly easy. But I run my clamps on an angle up. Because if you've ever been going down the highway and run over something, if this big part of that clamp is laying down here, it'll hit it and twist it or bend it back. At least with this, you stand a good chance of it rolling off of the rubber. Yeah, it makes it more of a pain in the ass to get a socket on it, but it might save you some trouble down the road. Well, it didn't do any good to angle that one because this one is gonna go right there which is puts the body of it on the downhill side, but oh well, anyway. But I'm pre-hanging my clamps because once you get this big muffler up here, you can't hardly reach it. And with these big tits on here, it's kind of hard to get to. Now on this one, I got one side's higher than the other one, one side's lower. So with these, see this one's higher than this one. So I'm assuming that it's gonna go in this direction it's gonna catch the high one and the low one. And we'll see if that's right. We start, I don't know. Huh. Doesn't really say in the directions, it does to show it. So 
So we may have to stick the muffler on first and see which way it better lines up because that doesn't look right. Now on your muffler, it'll show you an inlet side and right there where my thumb is. Oh, you got it playing? Yeah. Okay. That's the inlet right there. So that's going to be in this direction. So that goes on there and lines up with that clamp. So we know we're right there. And now we have to see which way this piece needs to hang. I think. Huh. Well, it can go that way. Maybe. That's funny. I could probably get that to work in either direction. It doesn't say. Let me look at the muffler I took off and see which side's higher. That might be the better thing to do. Well, right now I'm going to go ahead and take the weight off of this just a little bit. You don't want to push up too far, but you want to get some of that droop out of it when you tighten up your clamps. And I'm going to use a ratchet to get it started and to hold it. And I may just use ratchet all the way, but I may switch over to my impact. This, is, this will hold it where I want it to be while we continue. It's holding it now nice and snug when I picked up, took some of the relaxed weight off of it and just took that out. Now I'm tightening it all back down. We're tightening it all down and that's to hold it but not too much because we still have the rest of the pipe to put on. And that may mean I need to push up or down a little more. Right now I'm trying to get the weight off of the rest of the exhaust coming down off the turbo. Now we're just trying to try to fit the rest of the pipe. I looked at the factory exhaust to try to get a, an idea and it's, it's they're not exactly the same bend so I had to kind of look at it and use a reasonable deduction this piece is the one that definitely goes next. Got to put a clamp right here. Okay. All right, so that was pretty close. I had it fairly close. This one is the, this is one that goes over the axle. This goes on the rest of that. And it's gonna go, it's gonna slide onto this pipe. Oh, it's kind of tight. If it wants to. Yeah, I may have to pull it back out and make that fit first, but that's it. And then it's going to be hanging right about there. So, yeah, we're good. Well, we found, after we got it on there, one of these aren't round. I thought it was this one, so I opened that one up just a tad. That's not it. It's either from the mandrel bending. When you mandrel bend something in a tight radius like this, it always distorts something this close to it. If it were out here, not so much. But right here, this is kind of an egg shape. And it just doesn't quite fit down into that pipe quite right. So I'm gonna try to persuade it just a little bit. Doesn't take a whole lot. There we go. That's all it needed. That was good. The hard part is you, with this, I should have just dropped the tire, but so if you have some tools like this, which is, I mean, who's got a crescent wrench that big? I do, but most people don't. And since this 90 degree is here, I can actually adjust this. We'll call this a BFCW. Crescent wrench being the last two, you can figure out the first two. Squeeze that on there like this. Keep going, keep going, keep going right there. And there it is. A little easier than trying to do it by hand because if you notice that tit on that on this aftermarket pipe 
is really big. It's not going to come off. The factory one didn't come off. That one surely isn't going to come off. Anyway, it's all up there, nice and tight and snug. And I'm, I'm actually pretty pleased with the way this thing fit. And I'm going to, I can move this thing around if you notice. I, since it's actually holding some weight here, I do have a little bit of movement that I can put in it here to get the tip where it comes out where I want it. And this one came with a chrome tip. I'm not really big on that. I don't really give a crap. I might put it on there. It, it would look better, I guess, but I don't know whether I'm gonna put it on there or not, but yeah, we'll see. Anyway, well, as you can see, the fit, and we're all done here except for tightening up the clamps. We had to go buy two clamps down at O'Reilly's because they sh there, were, there were short two clamps in the kit. I don't know why, but they were, but they're they're cheap but they'll get me by i'm gonna order some nice stainless clamps wraparounds and uh upgrade on the clamps anyway but if you if i would have been expecting to buy this exhaust system from i think it's edge there were two clamps that they were short on to be able to put this thing together because i got the one clamp they gave me here then the clamp with a hanger another clamp with a hanger and that's all you get so the last two section is, sections of the pipe, there aren't enough clamps in the box. Unless they came out during shipping. There was one part of the box where one of these came through the sides, but I don't think a clamp came out of that hole. Anyhow, we're gonna wrap it up, tighten these bolts, get them right, and then we'll start it up. All right, we, we started it. some of it and screwed some of it where I could rivet it I did you know put all these rivets in here that was just a wrap around the muffler that had rusted out about five years ago but to get by until the point where that part right there broke off it bought me five years that was easy that was an easy fix until we got to that point that's why we replaced it to start with and it's it's okay We finished it up. We've driven it around. I even uh, had my son drive it around here so I could hear it from a distance. I'm really happy with this muffler. I'm glad that's the one I bought. It's called uh, the Edge um, by Jammer. I think that's the what it's called. But leave a anyway. description below. Yeah, they're very nice. Very happy. Uh, two clamps short, but that's okay. I was going to upgrade to the different clamps anyway. But it's clamped in position, and it sounds real good. And I would definitely. Uh, Give it a thumbs up.